Hello, my name is Sip Mendes. Welcome to Sip's Wood Chips. In the previous video, I showed you how I made this draw bar for my wood lathe. And it turned out pretty good. I got some good suggestions from viewers. Louie suggested recessing the nut into the handle. That way I don't have to put a cap nut over it. And I'll show you how I did that. Also, I'll show you how I made this simple uh, mandrel that fits my uh, drill chuck and it's great for turning stoppers. As always, make sure you read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with your power tools and equipment. Woodworking is fun, but it's also important to work safely. I'm ready to drill the hole in the top of the knob. I'm going to drill a half inch hole, and that's large enough to put a quarter inch nut in the hole. And I'm spinning at 500 RPMs. So that's one, most of the way in. One of the other suggestions I got was uh, in cleaning the bit, use a, a brush, a small brush, a bristle brush, and to clean it out. Uh, removing all of those shavings keeps the um, bit cool and keeps it cutting. So I drilled my hole about an inch and a quarter. That's what I thought I would do. So I'm ready to drill uh, a quarter inch hole and I'm going to try to get to drill all the way past the end of this uh, point here. And just use my little brush to keep the uh, shavings out of there. It's quite well. And you can see down in there that uh, the hole up here is about a half inch in diameter and down deep it's only a quarter inch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this nut here and, um, and it's on a rod, on a piece of uh, threaded rod. And this part here I smeared with a little bit of uh, axle grease and that's to help keep the, uh, the wax from the uh, epoxy from sticking in there. If I get any epoxy on those threads, it, it maybe it won't stick. So I'm going to mix my epoxy. So I'm going to try to make a small ball on the end of this and get it down there on that little edge. Push it down in there without getting it in the, the hole itself. Want to get it on the edges only. Then I'm going to put some on the nut. And I'll put it mostly out here on these edges. these edges here and just try to keep it off the threads a little bit won't be too bad you can break it loose Next, I'm going to go ahead and put it down in here and try not to cut those edges and seat it down in there. Wipe off any excess if you see any on there. And then I'm going to take a wing nut. Put this wing nut on there and help seat it good and tight. 
Okay, and I'll let that uh, set up. And now I have about one inch of space that I can adjust this to make it uh, longer if I need to. Okay, and that's a, a, a real good improvement, I think. These are the tips I use, and um, some are uh, imperial measurements or U.S. measurements, and some are metric. This one happened to be a metric, and that gave me some problems when I first started using these. But to make one, all you need is a metric bolt that matches the threads on this. This is a um, eight millimeter, one and a quarter threads per millimeter, and this one is 60 millimeters long. 60 millimeters is about two and a quarter inches. So the one thing you want to make sure is that your bolt does thread easily into the, the tip. If it was the wrong threads, it probably wouldn't. Uh, go on more than one or two turns. Okay. Now, how far this thread's in there doesn't really matter because a um, stud is going to go in there. This stud is going to go into here and that's going to be epoxied and this part here is going to be about three quarters of an inch. So on my mandrel, this one here I made, I made it right about one inch of exposed threads. And one inch of exposed threads would be about all the threads on this one here. So the first thing I need to do is cut off the head. And I'll do that over at the vise. So what I want to do is cut off the head on the bolt. And I want to cut it off as much of it as possible. Cut it leave as much of the shaft as possible. So when you cut it off with a hacksaw, it's going to leave off some little pieces that are very, very sharp. So just take a, a file and just file them off. It doesn't have to be pretty. Just got to cut off the burrs. Just file them off. If you want to take them over to the electric grinder, you can do them on the electric grinder too. It doesn't matter. But you don't want to leave any sharp burrs. So I've mixed a little bit of epoxy there and it's ready to go. Here's my little piece of scrap and it's got a 5 16 hole in it. And uh, I'm going to wipe down the shaft with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Just wipe it down, remove any any oil, any machine oil off it. Take a little bit of epoxy, and we're gonna go ahead and moisten that. Take a little bit also on here. This part here, when I push the, the wood onto it, it's gonna smear on down, and that's okay. What I get on there is what I get on there. Okay. And the only thing I can do is uh, push it on through, and it's going to make a bit of a mess, but that's okay. I want at least three quarters of an inch on this side. That'll, so my chuck can grab it. Let me move it over closer to an inch. Yeah, let me move it to an inch. Okay, that's like seven eighths of an inch. That should be fine. Now I can um, I can trim. I can't trim this side very well, but I'll be able to trim this other side once the epoxy hardens. And I'll let that set overnight. It's uh, pretty cool in the garage, so this epoxy is not going to set up very well. Isopropyl alcohol will also dissolve away epoxy until before it hardens. I'm going to go ahead and spin that at um, 1000 RPMs and I'm going to use this 3 quarter inch uh, gouge and just uh, round it down. Let's see if it doesn't fly apart.
So my tip is just a little bit smaller than an inch. It's pretty close to um, looks like about 23 millimeters. So I got a ways to go. So this is a work piece, so it doesn't have to be very well finished or anything. And I'm going to leave it heavy on this side. Okay, as well as being an inch uh, thick, I'm going to also make it smaller. I'm actually going to shorten it. Because this is three quarters of an inch thick and I'm going to go down to about a half inch. So I better do that first. And that means that I'm going to have to go in with my uh, uh, parting tool. And I'm going to actually have to cut away right against the steel. broke away which is good. good so I don't have to I was planning on sharpening it afterwards but um, may not have to So I'm going to take a round nose and just uh, clean it up a little bit, get rid of sharp edges. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna so I'll get in here with a, a pocket knife or the edge in the corner of a chisel and clean off any remaining glue. Well I sanded it and I haven't oiled it yet but I'm really surprised I actually found an eight millimeter uh, metric nut and I can use that to help clean up some of the threads on here. The only thing that's ever going to get put on here are things made of wood and possibly acrylic plastic. So those threads should be just fine. Okay, that looks good. So I want to take a little bit of um, clear polyurethane and this is more to harden the surfaces than anything else. This uh, this particular uh, this particular walnut is not very hard. It's actually quite soft. 
but if we finish it with, uh, with polyurethane, it'll soak in and harden and help it last a little longer. I think when I use it, I'll uh, always keep it against the drill. Chuck, give it a little bit of support because there's only epoxy holding it on and a little bit of tension. And um, I don't want it to move. All I need to do is uh, let it dry and harden, get a blank, and we'll be ready to go. And here's my draw bar in there. And all I have to do is put in my drill chuck and give this a couple of turns here. I think I'll line up my threads. And then just tighten it down. Now I can put that in my drill chuck and tighten it down. And what I want to make sure is that it's always seated all the way against the jaws of the chuck. Then I can take my chuck key and tighten it down. And now I'm ready to mount my blank. Here's a little piece of green mesquite. And what I usually do with these is thread the I draw a quarter inch hole and then I thread it part way with a matching tap. And I only do it about a little bit over a half inch. lock the arbor and um, I don't have any wax here but I usually, this, I usually put a little bit of wax on here just so that it doesn't stick and we'll give this a try. And what I want to do is that I don't want to over tighten it because I don't want to force this to move. So I need to unlock my armor. And I'm only going to spin it at 500. And while it's spinning, I'll bring up my tailstock and bring it up for support. And I'm ready to turn. Okay. So I've got my face shield. I'm gonna put, go ahead and put that on. And I'm gonna spin this at I'm gonna start at 850. I'm going to part that off with my parting tool. And I'll 
I'll finish the top with a round nose scraper. That worked pretty good. I'll go ahead and finish it up, sand it, and there'll be another one out the door. Well, I think that mandrel worked pretty well. Here's my finished uh, bottle stopper, and looks just as good as the ones I do on the other mandrel. One of the things I really like about doing it this way is that these mandrels, you can buy them online, but every one I found is made for a 3 8 uh, uh, SAE threaded. Uh, uh, stud and I can't find them for uh, 8 millimeter now I can make my own and if there's any other oddball sizes you know I can make my own and uh, they're very easily interchangeable and uh, the cost on the um, pre-made ones is very cheap they're from five dollars to ten dollars and uh, I think that works great because I have not found any mandrels for the uh, 8 millimeter so if you've enjoyed this video, click on like. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. Um, if you're not a member of YouTube, it's easy to sign up for an account. You can uh, ask questions, leave comments, and uh, get answers. So we'll see you again real soon.